up, sup, everyone? It's time to talk about the one and only once again. And today we're going to be touching on the subject. I guess this is a very debatable subject when it comes to whether or not Ito is a well-performing character when you are not able to afford all of his dedicated support. Now, yes, he is categorized as an on-field hyper carry, meaning that when you are playing Ito in an ideal situation, he is likely going to be your sole damage dealer. However, that doesn't mean that there are no team options when it comes to building him, uh, let's say, without a Zhongli, Albedo, Goro, or at least you don't need a high constellation version of these characters, especially when it comes to Goro. I think a lot of people have the idea of, well, I want a C6 Goro to make sure my Ito can get that extra bonus, which is plus 40% crit damage. Yeah, it's impressive. It's quite a lot if you think about it over the course of an entire Abyss run, but even without it, it has been proven proven that Ito functions just fine. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of your options if you don't have Goro, don't have Zhongli, don't have Albedo, don't have a 5-star weapon. What else can you do and is there ways to make this character still feel very powerful? Okay, let's get into the video. Starting from the beginning, we have to understand what are some of the options? What are some characters and weapons that you likely should look for if you don't have his 5-star options, both for weapons weapons and support. So the white blind, of course, I'm sure everybody knows. I think this is a great weapon just overall for defensive Claymore users. So it's not just Ito, it's Noel as well. These two characters right now are the primary users. I guess if you want to delve deep into the defense uh, Claymore category, you also do have Jin Yan, but all right, Let's just all right, take it easy. The three Jin Yan mains who just stood up. Take your seats. We'll save that for another day. But when it comes to Ito, yes, White Blind is a very good weapon, actually. And I do think with some of the other characters who also use this weapon, you're not going to really feel bad by investing into this. Apart from the BP Claymore, the White Blind is going to be one of the best free-to-play options you have for Ito. And it's not crazy difficult to get this one to refinement five so i do urge you all at the very least invest into this weapon if you're thinking about picking up ito now another thing that we talk about are the characters right this one is a little more tricky because there are a slew of uh, four star uh, even a five star geo character that's considered free to play friendly and the good thing about ito is that yes most of these four stars and uh, the geo traveler being the only five star can be compatible in his team so with the geo traveler along with goro you can make a great triple geo team and then put bennett into a flex because i'll be honest i don't expect anyone here to have goro at c4 in fact i don't even expect you to have goro at c1 a c0 goro is still a superb buffer to just generalized geo teams but more specifically it's defense scaling that can help out ito which will be uh, very valuable here apart from that the reason you want to run triple geo for teams that have goro in them is to make sure to take full advantage of his elemental skill and his burst skill which has a requirement for the maximum buff to be active you require three geo characters so ito is one goro would be one and you would need one more so just think of any flex character you can bring noel you can bring ningguang you can bring the geo mc these three are going to be uh, great options in this case if you don't have Zhongli and albedo okay so going forward from here it's really about your preference of play if you prefer true to have Ito on field all times as the hyper carry. You don't want any other characters involved in the combat for the most part. The Geo MC, Goro, and Bennett team is going to be the best way to go forward because a lot of these characters just come on user burst and they get off. Versus if you want to take that hyper carry burden off of Ito's shoulders just a little bit, you could alternatively pick up options like Noel, Goro, and Ito. So Noel and Ito would be sharing the field as on-field carries, okay? So in this case, the fourth slot, especially since you do have Noel, can also be flexed to a non-geo unit, which gives you access to a little bit more of a flexibility when it comes to team options building. You can choose uh, some very basic stuff as like layering more damage or slap another geo in there like Ningguang. You can form a quad geo, essentially a mono geo team with Ito, Goro, Noel, 
Noel and Ningguang. Ningguang's Jade screen would be pretty valuable here in the sense that it's going to give a pretty sizable buff to your Geo units. Now, in this particular team, Ningguang could also play the role of a burst support. So you switch to her, use her burst, and then switch out, which is very, very powerful. If you guys remember to the earlier days and for the newer players who are here, you don't remember, Ningguang was once regarded as like the queen of burst DPS. The amount of damage she was able to pump out was able to one-shot most world bosses at the time. Nowadays, not so much, but if you go look at the Regis Vines, uh, they still quake in fear in the presence of Madam Ningguang. So don't take this lightly. Yes, this is a free-to-play team, but the damage output here is actually quite insane because you don't have the tools to funnel damage back into Ito. You're going to have to find ways to give reason to characters uh, being on the field. So with Noelle, is not only that she can provide good healing because your Goro is not C4, but with Noelle on the team, like I said, you don't need to bring Bennett. And also, share DPS between Noelle and Ito with uh, Goro buffing. You're going to have a good time. The one problem with this is that you're going to be struggling to find <laughs> the weapons between Noelle and Ito. So in this case, uh, you might not want to refine five your white blind. You might just have to run two of them. In some cases, I hope maybe you have a five-star claymore here and there laying around that you could take advantage of. If not, don't sweat it. You don't actually have to run Noel. This is just one of the many team ops. The reason I'm talking about this is that I see a lot of people concerned or worried saying like, oh, I really want Ito, but I don't have Albedo. I don't have Zhongli and my Goro is only C2. I just feel like he's not going to work. And that is is simply not true, all right? A C0 Ito with a well-built weapon and artifact can rival the likes of a C0 Raiden. Now, remember, we're not talking about their supports. Yes, if you're talking about team options, like a free-to-play Ito team versus a Raiden national team, the Raiden national team is going to perform better because the Raiden national team is designed in a way where Xingqiu and Xiangling can layer damage back onto Raiden Shogun when she's on field. The beauty of the Raiden national team is the layering of three characters as I guess you want to increase Bennett. The four characters' effectiveness can be all taken advantage of by one character on the field. Yes, that's why Xingqiu, Ben, and Xiangling are some of the best units in the game because they can give access for characters to perform in this manner. Noel, Goro, and Ningguang or Geo MC, then not so much. So if you want to compare teams, a great comparison, and this is not by coincidence, that you could actually compare to is Zhao. Zhao is a character where if you run him with four-star weapons, four star characters to support him you don't really get a full slew of s class resources poured into Zhao. he can still function fine and his scaling makes up more than enough for the lackings in premium units ito is a very similar case he has great innate scaling he has a dedicated support that even at c0 can help him shine even more compared to some other dps options we currently have it's very simplistic mono geo teams are great or triple Geo plus one flex teams are also great depending on whether you want to run no L. It's not too crazy to think about though. If you don't run no L, run a healer because you don't have a C4 Goro. Okay, now some of the similarities when it comes to a pay-to-play Ito and a free-to-play Ito is going to be artifacts. I can't stress this enough because for the most part in these teams, you're going to have at the very minimum two sets of opulent husk. You want one set for Goro and you want one set for Ito. And if you also run Noel, you probably want a set for Noel as well. Apart from this, it's going to be okay okay to play him free to play but this is just something that uh, it doesn't matter if you're pay to play for Ito or free to play you're gonna have to spend resin all right i'm gonna be honest with you guys expect to spend 20,000 resin across all your characters to farm this domain to get good artifacts for all your characters if you want to be cheap about it get one set for Ito maybe run a two set for your Goro just to get a defense bonus and and do whatever you want with the rest right if you think ah yeah whatever I don't want to over invest but then again the question is if you're wanting to play a hyper carry team with Ito why don't you give him the hyper carry resources to succeed so if you want to play this team and you are also a free to play why cheap out when it comes to the thing that matters most uh, regardless of you being free to play or pay to play, right? 
artifacts can be equalized as long as you spend enough resin and time into it. So in my honest opinion, that's where you should aim to equalize, if not surpass, pay to play players when it comes to quality. And also you have the advantage of only investing in the couple teams being a free to play. You're not pulling every single patch. You can have the leisure of grinding Ito's artifacts for three, four, five, six months. And I know people who have been grinding since he came out still grinding now still not satisfied with what they have people you play with the cards that you're dealt with for these kind of videos i aim to tell you guys and showcase you guys some options that you can do as free to play but never ever ever cheap out on artifact grinding that is the one thing all of us have to suffer equally through okay with that said thank you guys for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video i'll urge you all to stay safe as well as peace peace until then bye